Okay. So we're going to start a photo album tour right now. Um, can you tell me who are we looking at right here? Okay, the pictures we're looking at now are the pictures of uh, Grandpa and Grandma Geis, my mother's parents. And th that's the pictures we're going to deal with at this particular point. And this particular one is a picture of Grandpa. And beside it, I have the picture of Grandma. And these pictures were taken in the uh, States. Now, the interesting thing about this particular family in terms of their background is that when Grandpa came to uh, North America, he was about 18 years of age and he was being brought up by his mother's family. His mother died when he was either born or shortly after, I'm not sure. And so he was being brought up by his mother's side of the family, his mother's parents. So he's, and this probably is where I kind of got the story that he might have been an adopted boy or had this feeling of about him being adopted. And his father remarried. And so there's, this is where the second family comes into the picture. And he, he was the only one that they had at that time. And he was about 18 years of age. And of course, times were tough in Russia at the time. And he was going to have to perhaps be serving time in the army. And his grandparents said, look, go to America. Go to America. Go. So they sent him. And he was going by himself. And the story is that when he left, I guess he didn't want to go. And so he went back under the guise that he'd forgotten his coat. It was kind of, you know, they'd taken him there, sent him there, and then, so they gave him his coat and they said, no, you go. So that's, and I think to some extent maybe that brings in some of the um, gentleness of the man to some extent in that he wasn't strong to, I can do this on my own. He, he, his attachment to his family, I think, was showing through at that particular point. Anyway, he went on board ship finally and when I did finally find the passenger list for them for him it was really by accident that I found it I also found on the same list my grandmother was on the same passenger list but she was on there with her brother now she and her brother were listed on the passenger list as husband and wife and I suspect they may have had to do that for her to get on board because she was 17 a young girl so that that's and that's an assumption on my part but where they met, we don't, I'm not sure. If they met, knew each other before they left, or they met on board ship. Uh, what I do know, though, is that he came over single, and she came over single, and they were married in Texas. And to add to that particular story, you know, my list of information that I have from that family when I gathered the data was a little piece of paper an aunt had written on, and she had the names of grandma and grandpa, their marriage dates, and then each of the children when they were born and for those that had died when they died. And I think there were some marriage dates on there. I'm not sure exactly. Anyway, she has them married on the 4th of November, 19, or 1894. And that's all I have of their proof of marriage or when or where. And it doesn't, didn't even say where. So as I'm doing the research for this family now, I... Uh, go, of course, through FamilySearch.org, and I'm looking for the names, and I never, I don't find anything. So this one particular evening, I'm on the internet, and I decide that I'm going to limit my search to the U.S. I'm not going to do the worldwide IGI thing. I'm going to the U.S. And I found Elizabeth and Jacob marriage. And my eyes, this is 11 o'clock at night, and of course, I'm a night hawk, so that, that isn't, I'm like, oh, so. Okay, start looking further, and to make it long story short, I ended up writing to the count Clay County where they were married. Actually, this was Kansas, not Texas, but they had been in Texas. Uh, Clay County, and I thought it was Clay City, but it was Clay County, and said, I've seen this on the Internet, and I want, can you give me information? And possibly the birth certificates for the two oldest children that were born there. We, a couple of weeks later, I got a letter back with my letter in it and some notes attached to it. And, you know, I'd said the usual thing, I'll pay you for this and whatnot. They sent me their original marriage certificate. So I have a copy of the original marriage license. And it's over 100 years old, which is, like, to me, was just a thrill to, to find that. Anyway, those are their pictures. That's Grandpa 
and that's Grandma. And I think she's a very attractive woman. Uh, but look at the tight curls in her hair. So these pictures you said were taken in the state? Yes. And a cousin, and I have no idea why he has this picture. Those are the only pictures. I have no idea either initially with those pictures. And those two pictures, just to describe those pictures a little further, uh, if you notice have this circle. Now, we, I haven't got the full picture because they were two big oval pictures that hung in the parlor in their farm house, out on the farm. And I remember them there. And I have a cousin who got them. And I mean, this is a stupid, ugly story that goes with it. But anyway, uh, those two pictures were there. And I was visiting my cousin's house one day. And I asked his wife, I said, is there any way I can take a picture of those? Because the only picture I have is pictures somebody took of the pictures. And it's in a frame, and there's a shadow on the front of it. So I was over there getting information for the family tree at that point. And she had the pictures, or they had them in their bedroom walls. And I said, is there any way I could take them and make copies or take them? She says, take them out. Well, I was just absolutely flabbergasted. Anyway, I took them out of the frame. I took them down to a printer. And these are the copies I got off of them. So the pictures are actually bigger, but this is the biggest he could make them. So th there's a little bit of her shoulder cut off. and it, I don't know of any more down here. No, because there, there's so the line of the color. circle. Yeah, but there's a little bit of the width cut off. But that, to me, didn't. I still have them. And so that's how I've got these pictures. And uh, now to go to, and oh, and then when I had them you know, on the back, I set the pictures up outside on, well, actually, I set them up on the barbecue and took pictures of the pictures outside. And those are the pictures, and they're really quite nice. Uh, now, this picture was sent to me by, as I say, a family friend, a uh, cousin, actually. And I had no idea that he had it. But this, this is a copy. But this is how I was able to prove where it was taken. The photographer's name and taken in Iola, Kansas. And of course, there's the outfits, and then the pictures of the two girls. And I have other cousins who have pictures of each of those girls. They have the pictures that those originals were on. So I, and I'm not sure, I've taken pictures, but I wouldn't need to take better ones of them. But that's their. Uh, who are the two girls in the picture? The two pictures of, or the two girls are um, Eva and Magdalene. Eva was the oldest. and the little one, Magdalene. And she was uh, about a year when they came to Canada, because Grandpa and Grandma came to Canada in 1899 from Kansas, obviously. And the route they took, or how long in between, I have no idea. I haven't been able to find that. And she died in 1906. She was burned to death. She um, went and got some straw to put it into the oven to help Grandma bake bread, and her dress caught fire. And she, before anybody caught it, she had burnt enough that she didn't die immediately, but certainly a very, I, th I would say, a painful death mm -hmm. at about the age of five or so. So that, that was kind of, kind of a sad story. But I mean, at least we have, I'm saying I have a picture of her. OK. That, so that's. That's that particular picture. Uh, the next I wanted to show you was a picture of this house now. The house is certainly not in as good a shape as it was at one point, but this is what I talk about. See, now this is later on in years, OK? And so my uncle, who's farming at this point, uh, or well, no, Grandpa's in this picture. You can see the field goes right up to the house. You know, it's not a farmyard that I see many farmyards with a fence around to keep the chickens in or to keep the field out. The farmyard goes right to the house. But look at, I mean, the elaborateness of the house uh, and the veranda and whatnot. Now, this apparently, and for you this would be an interesting thing, I think this is what is known as a catalog house. Uh, you've heard of the catalog houses. Okay, that, apparently that was a catalog house. And this is the house proper. And on the back of the house, and I have no pictures of it really at all that I can show you so that you can see it. Grandpa built on and added 
a kitchen for grandma. Okay, so that is an add-on on that side of the house that you don't see here. This would have been the, what was the dining room side. The parlor was here. There were two or three big bedrooms upstairs and three bedrooms down here on this side, which would have been, right, this would have been one of the bedroom windows. And there were two more there, and then the, there was a bedroom here. This was kind of a hallway upstairs. But anyway, that, that's, that's the picture of the house that he, uh, the catalog house that we built. That he built. And this is you would go over and stay stay in this house occasionally. I didn't I didn't stay there. I don't recall ever staying. This is Mum's side of the family, okay. and I don't know why. And and it could have been because well, Grandpa was older, um, and maybe not as conducive to having young kids around as as uh, my dad's family was. And of course, they were a little bit further away. Okay. You know, they weren't quite as close, sort of thing. So. Now, this is a picture of the two families, okay? This would have been Grandpa and Grandma. This is Grandpa's half-brother, okay? And his wife. And then the children of the two families. Now, i got to stop and think here. i got to take a quick look. <laughs> Which one's Mom? Uh, okay. This Mom is the blonde little one. She's the youngest, almost in the group, except for that one. And who's the sister? Uh, the sister is my mother's older sister. And now that, now that's a kind of an interesting little story. This is when she was entered the Ursuline Sisters, and she was going to be a nun. Uh, however, after a couple of um, stories Grandpa heard or was told, uh, apparently they did not treat her well in there and uh, people said you better get out of there they're abusing her so he pulled her out and said she couldn't be there he wouldn't let her stay and she was a very gentle pious woman all her life her family i mean she that she just was a gentle pious woman all her life that was no uh change in that you know and her kids are Good kids. I mean, they're devils, some of the boys, but anyway. When you were growing up, were you, did you, were you close to any of your aunts and your uncles in this picture? No. Um, just a minute. Okay, which one is it? I think. This is Mom's youngest brother, so he was next to Mom, okay? He was older than Mom. And he's the only one I really, um, he stayed a bachelor all his life. And so, but he was a bit of a, I don't want to call him a recluse, but he was a quiet person. He didn't stay. We did have, and I shouldn't say I did, in terms of uncles and aunts, I did have an uncle who lived with us. And he was like a second father to us. And I, I have some pictures I can show you later. Uh, oh, I would have been four or five when he came to live with us. And he lived with us for a number of years. So he was like a second father to me. And he never married. And... Uh, dearly loved man and, and again another gentleman uh, in terms of gentleness and quietness yeah I, I sometimes think I not many kids get the opportunity to have two two fathers or two people that are like parents the rest of these on here um, probably not we had mom had a sister Odilia pardon me mom was Odilia Lagardia who uh, probably mom and dad were closest to and they would play cards a couple of times a week visiting back and forth, and they, and they developed their own system of uh, bridge, uh, the rules of bridge. They played rules that I have never seen or heard before or since either. And my husband, whose family played bridge, just shook his head when he saw them playing bridge. He just couldn't believe that that was the rules for bridge. But that's the way they played, and they had lots of fun. And that was the aunt, probably of all of the aunts, that I might have been the closest to or knew the most. What was her name? Lagaja. <laughs> That's a different name. Yes, it's a very un L E G O D I A. Okay. Uh, and you know where it comes from? I have no idea. It, but it, it, yes, it is a very unusual name. Okay. Now this one is a picture of the family. Uh, about 1939. So this would be. Um, I'm not. I'm in the picture, but I'm not in the picture. How in the heck do I say this? Just a minute. 
I gotta just I've gotta make it sure here. Yeah, I think I don't know. Somebody has told me that I I'm uh And it may not then have been in 39. It may have been earlier. But I've been told that these pictures were taken in 39. Um, if they are, then I should have been on the pictures with them. And I'm not. So I, my suspicion is that it might be more like 37 and mom is pregnant with me. That, that's because of the ages of some of these people that are here. And uh, they were younger than I was. But that's basically, and this happened to be a, an occasion where this aunt and this aunt came back to visit with grandma and grandpa and some of the neighborhood people, the Resch family that were very close with the Geist family, were there on that occasion. And so that so it's the two families. So it's not just all grandma and grandpa's kids and, and their children. It includes, uh, well, this would have been her nephew, Adam, and then the Reshes that were very good friends of grandma and grandpa's. And, and that was taken out by the garden there. Uh, this would have been the picture that I've had copy made, which is a little clearer than that in terms of uh, grandma and grandpa and their kids and their spouses. And that, that has to be the same occasion because of the clothes that everybody's wearing. It's the same outfit. I don't expect that they would have gotten the same outfit two years apart and more in the same dresses. With the same people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so those are the pictures of them at that particular stage, uh, Grandma and Grandpa and, and their family. And you see, you know, here's Grandpa. He's certainly on in years. And so is Grandma. And, and that's how I remember them. That, that's being older. Yeah, as older people. Um, now, in terms of some of the others, uh, these are pictures now of the individual families that, uh, and some of them were taken at funerals. Uh, these are more recent ones, and of course these are family now that I've gotten to know. Uh, Rose, who is actually my cousin, but because of the age could be considered an aunt, <laughs> you know, th th that difference. Uh, I don't know if you, their families, we don't need to, uh, and again this is if there's a person that you specifically remember in your childhood or an event of that person, then that's something well, that we would... Okay, this, that family, this family here, the Dodsworth family, and the Miller family and the Heck family, which were mom's three oldest sisters. Um, Dodsworth family, I really don't... They moved kind of up into northern, northwestern Saskatchewan and even into Alberta, and I really never got to know them until I started doing the history. The Miller family and the Heck family lived close together uh, just on the Saskatchewan-Alberta border, and we would get to see them occasionally when there would be weddings. Okay. And so I can remember on one occasion, and I think this is the wedding, that I went two with grandma and grandpa, or with my mom and dad, I should say. And that's a picture I took. And so I would have been, you know, what, 13, 14, maybe somewhere between 10 and 14, 1950, 13, I guess. Uh, I remember going to that wedding and uh, being there for that. And we, all dad had was a truck. And it was a big deal for us to drive with a truck. It takes me five hours to make that trip now for Mijana would have been seven, eight hours. For, and, and it was a big deal for us to go to that wedding. So that, that's, that's sort so of all. So can you tell me what a wedding was like back then? What was a wedding like? Well, at that time, the wedding uh, took place, basically, the ceremony would have taken place in the church, oh, which you, is what, you oh, you want it. Yeah. Okay, which is what you see there, them, the couple coming out of the church. And then we went to the family home and there would have been a meal there. And uh, we were all together, and that's sort of where the, the party, if you want to call it, took place, was at the family farm. Uh, that, that's what I remember of weddings and even the, another family. You go to the church, the church ceremony, and then the rest of it took place at the family farm. So how long would it, a wedding last? 
Well, of course, we would be up there. It would be that all that day for sure. It wouldn't be a three-day wedding like the Ukrainian style is, but it certainly would have been an all-day affair, and nobody questioned, you know, how the food got there, who made the food. Might have been neighbors, might have been the mother did all the preparation, and whoever was there, who was able to be there for the wedding would be would be there. It wasn't uh, limited to invitations as you as you would have a, a wedding now. Was alcohol something that was present at weddings? I don't recall it. I I expect it was. But to what extent? I would say probably very limited, depending on the family. And I don't recall it at any of these weddings. But I'm a kid, too, and so I'm not paying any major. And from even some of the pictures I've seen, I don't, uh, I don't see any sign of any liquor there. Uh, if there would have been liquor, there would have been, it would have been homebrew. And that would then have been for the men only. So they'd have gone out and had a shot of their moonshine. Uh, or white lightning, or whatever we called it, or they called it at that point. But yeah, that that that's that would not have been something that was significant at all to be part of the uh, celebration. But I'm sure that they had to. I mean, just trying to be practical about it. I I expect it might have been there, but I I couldn't tell you for sure whether it was or not. First two children, and that's the Ligadja. Okay, this is the one that would play cards. Yes, they're the okay. couple that played cards with mom and dad a so lot. Can you tell me a little bit about your aunt's personality? What type of an aunt was she? Um, she was just she was just a nice aunt. Uh, you know, in talking to her children, uh, I understand that the boys were her favorite. That she uh, she boys got away with blue murder, sort of thing. The girls say, but uh, no, she was not. Uh, we. Obviously, her and mother got along really well, and so the visitations back and forth were frequent and were often, uh, or often, you know, a couple of times a week, sometimes playing cards. Uh, there were two things that would happen. There were, there were two things that weren't discussed in that family later on, and uh, those were religion and politics. And there was a totally different um, view from both families. Dad was a very strong liberal. Uh, Basil was a very strong ccf -er, or what would we call an ndp -er today. And uh, so they were on opposite sides of the pole. They didn't agree. And so, if, but otherwise, as far as getting along, uh, to me, knowing those differences, and in terms of religion, uh, Uncle Basil had had some problems and had some run-ins that he wasn't very pleased with, and so uh, kind of his religious affiliation kind of got thrown out and he decided he didn't like what the church was saying or doing. He had some bad experiences, and, and Dad was very strong on his faith, and uh, so again. But any further than that, no, we didn't, uh, just didn't, they weren't talked about. But did they play cards? And of course, uh, you have yeah. Jean and oh. Anne in here. Okay, those are the two oldest girls. Okay. Do you remember them when you were a kid? Yes, I remember both of them. Uh, Jean would have left home before, uh, and it is, it's, it's her wedding that I remember because that was a wedding that caused some consternation for my uncle, and that's where his, uh, you know, fight with the church took place. And so Anne... Uh, yeah, and actually helped out mom for a while. Stayed with, you know, help came and worked with us for a while, not long. Uh, she's uh, uh, she's had a hard life. I mean, anything strong about her? Uh, different? No. Uh, we back back and forth with them a bit when they would come home to visit and whatnot. But uh, other than that, no, I can't remember anything specific. Their younger sister, Tilly, the next one after this, is one of the people we were going to interview that I had given the names for, okay. and then refused because she felt that her family family wouldn't, I, I don't know. And to me, I don't know what's in the family. I mean, I know the family, and I don't see anything that would cause, but anyway, that that's their right and their decision. With Dean, um, 
You mentioned that the church had a... She got married to a non-Catholic, and for some reason or other, the priest and her father had a run-in, and it just created war. Mm -hmm. it, it was not uh, something that was... Over here you have Peter and Ray. Roy, yeah. Do you remember them? Yes. Peter uh, was a little older. Roy's about my age. Uh, we saw them frequently. Uh, Peter joined the forces. Uh, in terms of knowing much about him, not really. He was, I don't think he was that great a guy. He was... Uh, and Roy was her favorite, I think, in many ways. And he was a spot kid. He got, mind you, the youngest one was even more spot. But that, at that point, <laughs> it... Uh, you know, a little bit of those. Uh, but here's the picture you see, Mom. Now, this is our second daughter. Mom's holding her. We're, we're home for the weekend. And this is, their, this is a typical card-playing afternoon, you see, for them at the kitchen table. Um, is that how they used to play when you were growing yep. up at mm -hmm. the kitchen table? Yep. All, everything took place at the kitchen table that we had in the, in the house. It, the living room was there to, to sit and visit in, but cards, you know, it could be Sunday afternoon, it could be Monday night, it could be Friday evening, whatever time they decided to get together. And when we had, um, like we saw her a lot, because when we, in summertime, I said, told you earlier, mom raised chickens. And, oh, okay. And there would be about three times of the year where we would do our own butchering. Okay, dad butchered his own pigs and cows, and we did the chickens. And so Aunt Agarja would come, uh, our school teacher's wife, who was a very good friend of my mother's, and myself. Sometimes there were five of us. I'm not sure if my sister Bernice was, I don't, I think Bernice was too young. Anyway, we would, we would do up to 100 chickens a day. And between her and the school teacher wife, friend of mom's, uh, we would have a contest to see who could draw the chicken the fastest. And I could get a chicken drawn, that is taking the insides out and ready after it had been plucked in less than a minute. I mean, this is, this is what I remember, you see, I'm doing this and cleaning them. I, you know, and if I had to do it today, I, yeah, I could clean a chicken. A lot of people, it wouldn't bother me. It, it, just, just so when I buy chicken at the store, you know, one of the first things I do is to check to see if they've cleaned it properly inside. And if I have to take something out, like that they've left the lungs in or something, they come out. I know what they are. I know they should. I don't want them there. Um, a lot of people are quite queamish about that now and wouldn't do it. But it, it you know, and, and somebody, somebody said to me, after doing those, that many chicken in a day, did you get turned off from eating chicken? And I said, no, I didn't. I enjoyed chicken. And that was my job, as I told you earlier, every Saturday, killing a couple of chickens. And I learned how to kill them properly, as my mother would say. Uh, you know, so that they, uh, like, we didn't chop the heads off and let them bounce around in the yard like some people did. I used to get, if I did that, my mother would have swatted me across the rear end. Uh, I had to bleed them properly, and that was, was one of the things we learned, one of the things we did. We didn't bat an eyelash at them, so. So after they, and after they were cleaned, then they would have to go to the, we would put them into a container and we'd hang them down the well to keep them cool because we didn't have fridges. And so the well was your fridge. Now, some people had ice boxes, or ice houses, I should say, where they had blocks of ice that they kept in. We didn't have any. We kept our cream and our milk uh, and our meat in long metal containers that we hung down the well. And so anyway, that, that was... that work well in the summer? Yes, yeah. The well was really quite cool. I, I was quite surprised when I think about it now that it uh, did that. He's helping mom. He's hanging out the sheets and things on the clothesline. And here he's helping dad haul hay. And that's him up there. And the hay would be taken from the hay rack and have to be pitched into the barn roof. There weren't uh, any pulleys or anything where some of the farmers had. This was all pitched from, from the hay rack, which was taken out to the field to get the hay to begin with, and then heaved up into the uh, hay loft. And here is a picture of him with the three oldest ones the, of us. And there is my sister. Now, if you take a look at that, then you can get an idea of the little imp. I mean, she's there in the picture, and she's got to stick out her tongue. Uh, that, that was kind of, and that's the way she'd be. What was your uncle's name? Harry. 
And this was on your dad's side? My mother's side, my your mother's brother. brother. So it was G... E Geis. Geis. Geis, yeah. Now, I, just a little interesting story about him, and that is when I got married, he, along with my husband's brother, were the two people who signed the witnesses on the our marriage certificate. He was one of the our witnesses, if you want to call it. And uh, he, when he signed the marriage certificate, he signed it not as Harry Geis, but as Harry Bast. That's, in my interpretation, is how much he thought of himself as one of the family. That's you know how integrated we were sort of although he was he was not my dad's brother he he signed it as Harry Bast so how long did he live with you he left and moved into his own place in 1963 he would have moved in with mom and dad I think about 1940 41 somewhere in there so he was with mom and dad well he actually moved on his own after mom died no sorry sorry after we were basically, all, oh, most of us were grown up. Uh, so he was with them about 22 years. Oh. So, you know, he's had opportunity to, to feel like one of the family. Uh, Did he continue using that Bass as the, his last name? No, 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 out? no. It, he, the that was the only time he wrote it. And so my, my joke and my story, of course, is that, you know, I'm not really married because after all there is no, And think about it, when we start, do, you know, marriage certificates are considered to be one of the most legitimate sources for family history. Uh, can you see if somewhere I don't make note of this, somebody looking at that and looking for people and looking for the rest of their lives and never finding a guy by the name of Harry Bask? And they say, yeah, but there is one. And there isn't. You know, just just a little quirk of the whole. Uh... So laundry, you want to tell me a little bit about what, how you did laundry? Laundry, laundry was every Monday. Monday was wash day. And we had a washing machine. We never had scrub boards at our place anymore. By the time mom and dad got married, or by the time I remember, we had a washing machine. It was run by a motor. And of course, as you washed it, it spun or agitated in the uh, tub at the time. Then you had to take it and put it through a ringer and crank the ringer to... Uh... No, we didn't have to crank that ringer. That ringer worked on its own. And then go through the rinse, and then you'd have to crank it through, put it through the ringer again. And then it was hung out on a line to dry. In the wintertime, Mom would have lines strung. It may have been hung out to dry... Uh, initially on the lines, like the sheets would have been put outside and so they would have frozen. And then we brought them in and sometimes then we hung them and we would have lines in our bedrooms upstairs. And uh, then they would finish drying in, in the bedroom. There wouldn't be any water dripping because you would freeze, be kind of like freeze drying so that when they thawed they'd be still wet but they wouldn't be as wet as they were. Oh, they were fresh smelling. But it was a lot of work, I mean. And then other things uh, well, it would have been hung on lines around the house somewhere to dry. But that, but definitely Monday was wash day. So you have a picture of your uncle helping hang out the laundry. Was it common for men to help with the laundry? No, no. And that was because that was his way of helping out uh, part of the, I think the part of the initial agreement when he moved in with us, I understand, was that when he asked if he could live with us, and, and I think it was initially it was going to be a temporary thing. Um, he asked Dad if he could, do, and Dad had said to him, it's your sister who's going to have to do all the work, the laundry and the cooking and whatnot. Uh, if she says it's fine, it's fine with me. And that's what it was. So I guess that was his way of helping. And at that time, uh, Uncle Harry would help hang out the laundry. Uncle Harry also did the chores for the four or five cows we might have had. He did the milking. Uh, Dad didn't like doing it. That was not, and so that was sort of a division of the labor that went on to keep the place running. Um, however, in spring and in fall, when it was harvesting, seeding and harvesting time, uh, 
we took over doing the chores. So, I mean, I can remember milking cows till, and separating and doing all that kind of stuff when, during harvest time. Uh, way back, I, I don't know for sure. I'm, I'm sure I was, at least from the time I was 10 years old, if not before, I knew how to milk a cow. And, Is that because your uncle was needed out? Because he, he would be out, they would be out harvesting together. And he also owned some land, you see. So part of it, he had his own farm or he bought his own farm. So basically what they were doing was farming two farms together, but he didn't have the funds for the equipment initially. And so that's sort of how it started. He came and lived with us, helped dad out, but then they did the farming for the two places and uh, eventually then he built up his own equipment. But then they continued to farm together. I mean, it was a lot easier if you've got two people working together. And then they would hire, quite often we would have a hired man. Uh, so one of them would be doing the swathing and the other would be doing the combining. And then the third person would be driving the truck to haul the grain to bring it back to the granaries. Uh, I did part of that too. I, I mean, I can I can remember driving truck and hauling grain uh, when I was once I was old enough, and I and I didn't have a driver's license. Uh, I did the hauling of that grain without a driver's license, but then that was okay because it was on my own our own land. So as long as I didn't go on the road, there wasn't any worry. But there were a few occasions when I drove on the road. <laughs> I think towards the end, Dad would have had about a section and a half or a section and a quarter. I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to go to some maps and some and look at some stuff. When he started out, he would have started out with a half section. But eventually, of course, a half section isn't enough to raise a family and by no means anywhere is enough now. And so he acquired more land. And my uncle would have had... I believe by the time when he died, he had a section of land. No, three, he had three quarters of land. That's what he had, three quarters of land. So, you know, between the two of them, they were working close to three sections of land, spring and fall. And of course, it was at a time, too, when um, crop rotation was a little different than now because you left some summer fallow and then you seeded some and then you had some that was seeded again that had been seeded last year. But mainly it was a... Uh, a crop rotation with, with summer fallow, which is not a procedure that is practiced very much today anymore. It's, it's continuous cropping now uh, to, to get through that. That's mom, okay. a very pretty woman, and this is right after they were engaged. So tell me a little bit about your mom. Mom, a gentle woman, yet a strong woman, a very creative woman, um, when she left home, or by the time she left home, she had, her education consisted of grade eight. And uh, it would have been after I was gone from home that she decided that she wanted more education. And so she started taking her grade nine, grade 10 by correspondence. Now she's, and this is at a time when my youngest sister is now 16, so she would have been taking it close to the same time. But it was just too much for her, and with all the work that was there, uh, she didn't finish it. But she would have loved to have continued, to have gotten more education, but that was not the thought at the time when she was growing up, that grade 8 was enough for girls. They didn't need more. Uh, she was also a very uh, creative woman um, and a good cook, a very good cook and wasn't afraid to try things. And there are lots of things that we have as a result of her endeavors in that sense. Uh, very particular, too. Kept a very neat house. And on the farm, that's not very easy to do sometimes when you've got the dirt blowing all over the place and whatnot. Uh, loved her family. Uh, and didn't have favorites, really. So often you see one child as a favorite over the others. I have to say that I can't really uh, say that there was a favorite. Uh, to some extent, Bernice might have been the apple of Dad's eye, but really and truly, we didn't get 
I mean, and that was just because Bernice knew how to handle that. Uh, you know, an episode with Bernice, and this is more of the personality of Bernice that I can share with you, in that uh, uh, by grade 12 when I was at home, Dad loved hockey. And so if there was a hockey game in town, he went. And we would, as kids, would want to go to the hockey game too. And this particular evening was probably a Monday night. Friday nights were no issue. But Monday night, school's the next day. We asked if we could go to the, I asked if I could go to the hockey game, and Dad said, no, you got schoolwork to do. And I, of course, I knew by that stage how to do this. Bernice says, Dad, we're going along, aren't we? You can take us to the hockey game. We went to the hockey game. That, that was, I mean, so we, we knew how to work, work this. Dad, Dad had trouble saying no to Bernice. That was, I was the oldest. I was supposed to be work. You know, he'd say to me, if you got your homework done, if you got the ironing done, he'd always have something like that. But he never said anything like that to Bernice. So we, we, we worked that out pretty quickly. It didn't take us long to find it. Anyway, that's. Do you know how your parents met each other? Yes. Mom and Dad met at a ball game. Dad, and then this take you back to Dad's call. I'm going to just backtrack here to Dad's college years. When Dad was sent to Edmonton to go to become a priest and went to college there, I understand the pros were there, and they were doing some scouting, and they had were going to offer Dad an opportunity to come and play baseball, and he was that. He was good enough to do that, I understand. And when Grandpa heard about it, Grandpa was furious. He was supposed to be there to become a priest. He was supposed to be there to get an education. And he said, and if that's what he's going to do, I'm pulling him out. Well, Dad finished the year, but that was, Grandpa just would not hear of anything. That was scandalous almost. Uh, Dad was a good hockey player, and he was a good baseball player. And he loved his sports. And I think some of that has come down to his children, because the girls all played ball, and we were all good ball players. Uh, my brother wasn't a bad player either, but he wasn't as enthusiastic by any means as Dad. So there's Dad was at a ball game, or was playing ball, and Mom was there watching the game, and he said, I saw her. He says, I said, that's it. He says, and that was it. Uh, and that, that's How old was he? It. He would have been 23, 24. He was 25 when he was married. Your mom? mom was 21 when they were married. Uh, it was, in some ways, it was a bit of a sad wedding because Grandpa, Dad's father, was absolutely furious because he wouldn't, you know, he, this boy was supposed to be a priest and he wasn't, wasn't happy about it. And uh, his and the, and the cup, maybe the other side. Yeah, that's that's their wedding picture. Uh, The picture with the bridal party has a picture of Mom's cousin and Dad's sister, who were the bridesmaids. And uh, I know my aunt has told me this. She said, after as soon as the wedding was over, Grandpa pulled me home because didn't want him her talking to any boys. You know this. This, this anyway. Uh, whereas did he? Did your grandfather come to love your 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 mother? Oh yeah, I think so. There was no, you know. But it, again, it was you know this he son, this son that wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing. Uh, the um, and I think it shows there. Uh, is there another picture? Uh, Dad would do anything for mom, and they were married in October. Now, what was the time frame in between? I'm not I'm not sure about okay. that part at all. And then there's, there we are, the six of us. Aww. See, the three old ones and the three little ones. <laughs> or the, yeah, the three big ones and the three little ones. Uh, and there's the three of us again. Look at the hairstyles. Okay, now, yeah, and I have, oh, they, I have them in my book. Yes, I had ringlets, and mom did them all the time. I mean, this was, and my sister's hair was curlier than mine, so hers weren't, but yes, I wore, and then I went into what are known as French braids when I went to school. And you know French braids. Mm -hmm. And mom braided our hair every morning before we went to school. 
and the, again, this is, you know, the meticulousness of, and we were always neat and tidy, always neat and tidy. Mom made some of our clothes. Uh, you know where she would get the material from? Probably in the catalog. In some cases, I have, I believe they're, okay, my book. Uh, a, the coat I think I had might have been maybe made over from another coat. I'm not absolutely positive about that, but I think that's what that coat was. It was kind of a coat jacket. Uh, yeah, probably through the catalog would have been if the odd time she would have got to Regina when mom and dad came up. And what I remember later on, yeah, we bought when she came to Regina, she would buy it. But initially, I'm not. How often would you come to Regina when you were a kid, or would your parents go to Regina? For a while, I'm sure it may have only been once a month. Maybe then after a while, it was once every two weeks. And later on, we might have been in Regina once a week. As I, as I got older, I would say it would have been once a week they would have come to Regina. And there would have been uh, a tra what would be called a travel day, or a Regina day. What would you go to Regina for? Shop. Maybe clothing, we needed, where we needed something, maybe. Um, or we also came to Regina to bring eggs to Regina. And then later on, they even brought uh, cream to Regina. They, instead of shipping it in the train, they would bring it. Oh, yeah, you want that? I'm just, okay. So you, with the hair and doing your hair and stuff, how often would you wash your hair? Once a week. Okay. I think that, that's all I would remember. The hair would be washed once a week. Did they have shampoo and, and conditioner type things? Up Definitely no conditioners. And I can't remember. what I, I would expect that all Mom did, used was soap, the soap we had. Uh, and we had... And that the hair would have been done Saturday night. We'd have a bath Saturday night. And a bath Saturday night was um, the square metal wash tub in the middle of the living kitchen floor. And the youngest one would go in first. It's not like the old stories that you hear, you know, with the old the saying, the, you know, throw the baby out with the bathtub. And the men got first. In this case, it was the kids first. And then by the time we all got, we probably got, got dad and mom when they had their bath would be fresh water. There'd be water there. But uh, yeah, we, Saturday night and our hair would be washed and curled or braided later on. And while all this went on, Hockey Night in Canada was on. Foster Hewitt and we listened to the hockey games. That all went with Saturday night's bath. Now that would have preceded getting the house all cleaned up. And house cleaning Saturday meant you know, as I said to you earlier, stripping of the beds and putting new bedding on, polishing Dad's shoes, doing some baking for Sunday and getting some meat ready, and cleaning the rest of the house. Now, cleaning the house meant in the kitchen on the farm and in the living room, maybe, we wiped down the walls. The kitchen was, no, the kitchen was my job for a while, and then I had the living room, upstairs in the living room. And we each got certain jobs to do. Each of us had to do it. And then after the cleaning, and then, of course, the floor would be scrubbed and waxed. And We didn't really polish it at first. We polished it as kids because we slid on it and polished it. That was, that was how the floor got polished but, uh, <laughs> to begin with. But uh, that, that was Saturday's routine, and then at night after supper, we would have a bath, and we'd be ready for church the next day, so we were all clean. And then Monday, the laundry would be done. And then, and we had a sink in the kitchen, which was right with a pump on it. We had a cistern with water in it. In it. We did not have running water, because the water that we drank on the farm, that we, where I grew up, was not drinkable. So we hauled all our drinking water, and the water that we cooked with and used for cooking and that kind of thing was all hauled. So Dad would haul probably a couple of barrels of water a week at least. Uh, and we stored the barrels in the basement. So the water would stay relatively cool. 
and then the cistern had the water that dad would collect each in the spring the runoff from the melted snow would go and then he would haul water to fill the cistern uh, the water that on the wells that in the wells that we had on the farm actually wasn't even supposed to be wasn't really even fit for the cattle it was very alkaline but the cattle drank that water and we used it to water the garden with later on but that's all the water on the in the wells on the farm was used for uh, so washing water was in the cistern and dad would have to fill the cistern two or three times a year and to get the water from the cistern then we had a pump with it at the sink at the back and it was one of these sinks that were about that wide and about that that deep and then to wash your hands there was a basin that sat in the sink because of course you didn't want to fill up the whole sink with water and under the sink then when you drained it for a while we had what we called no the sink drained outside the water drained outside but when we did anything like peeling potatoes or anything else like that it was all kept in what we called a slop pail under the sink and that would have to be carried out each day uh, there was no running water in the house at all even from after I left even after we got electricity on the farm we never had running water simply because there just wasn't any water to be had for that purpose uh, so we roughed it in that ways and I can remember days maybe I didn't do it as much as again Bernice and Margie and the other two uh, you know I think about it now and think of uh, you know he gets sticky when it's hot like it has been the last couple of days and you have to have a bath or you have to have a shower you know I think I know I couldn't have gone or maybe we did so we would have a kind of wash down bath at the kitchen at that sink in the kitchen and I can recall dad coming down from upstairs and saying girls get some clothes on how can you stand there like that and, I mean you'd be in your panties and bra and slip I mean you weren't in just panties and bra you had a slip on which is covers as much as most people get covered today um, and then, oh girls get some, get your clothes on <laughs> so that that that's uh, that kind of uh, church now the church that you're going to see today looks like that in structure appearance but is a brick church now okay, okay so but this is the original wood frame church which is a hundred years old this year and I believe the brick church was basically built around this so in essence the interior kind of part of it is um, is still pretty much there it's it's been enlarged this was this uh, length part with the with the steeple and whatnot here the steeple there now is taller and there is a, a cross section so in essence the church could be kind of looked like a bit of a cross it was oh. enlarged okay so it has the wings that come out the sides. And I think I have a picture of it later. This uh, church here, though, did you ever attend the original church? Well, it, as I say, this mm -hmm. is, I think, is the interior is the original. So okay. that, uh, did, uh, this part, I never knew it as a wood structure building. Okay. I only know it as a brick building. Is this the church that you were baptized in? And in, married in, okay. and where we went to church regular, right, where I grew up. Your first Holy Communion. Union and everything in there, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, the community that I'm from is a um, very Catholic community, and when it was uh, basically being formed in, or was in existence and in the 1920s, approximately, the priest that was in charge at that time wanted to have uh, some religious sisters in the community and were the teachers for the school this is well here this this is the architectural drawing of the convent and this is the convent I stayed at okay and that's the architectural drawing of the convent uh, of, for the sisters that uh, taught at that school now it's a public school but it's a Catholic community and so it was kind of like a separate school in that the religion was taught as part of the class not as uh, an extra sort of thing it was part of the day's work and so there is a picture of it as it's being constructed which I I don't remember where I got it from but that doesn't matter and that is in essence how it kind of looks today it still is there it's been an all-girls school or a school for delinquent kids the provincial government bought it and took it over and kept 
delinquent girls there. And now it is privately owned and he's making it a residence and I think he's also doing some tours of it, I'm not exactly sure. This is the very first convent that was in that town, in Sedley, and that's where the sisters lived and the uh, five sisters that were there. The house is still there, it became a private home, um, and then this one was built. Then when this, this was too big for the sisters, they moved to a smaller one, which is basically across the street from here, into another house, which became the convent. And then that's the picture of the school. It was built about the same time as the convent. So this is the school that you attended K? Or no, first cut my, my grade one to grade not eight were at a little country school. Okay. Uh, this is where I attended high school. And in the summertime when we had catechism classes, because catechism classes when I was younger were taught in the summertime, two-week catechism classes that you would take for uh, First Communion and Confirmation. Uh, and then we attended, that's where we attended. Okay, so will you tell me a little bit about what high school was like for you? High school. Uh, I stayed at the convent, as I told you. Uh, there were two classrooms. One was grade 9 and grade 10 and one was grade 11 and grade 12. I was taught by the Loretta sisters. Uh, a full slate of classes. I took three languages, French, German and English. The usual classes in English or French, German and Latin, sorry, and then English and composition and writing or whatever and uh, literature. Uh, a history class. Sports weren't a big thing, although recess we played volleyball and things like that. Uh, and we played softball, I guess. And, and softball was, girls softball particularly, with the community, obviously we had a good number of girls that we could have a good softball team, and we kind of became known as a team to want to be beaten. And then from the school nucleus, more or less, that we had, we would then, we were all sort of around, and then in the summertime we would go to sports days, which were local sporting events. and. Uh, play ball at those, and again, it was in, in a 20 minute, or a 20 mile proximity, and attend each of the sports days and play there with those. Uh, so when you were going to school and you said you you're playing softball, would this be something like you would play with other, other schools, against other schools? Like when we had so our so-called field days, yes, there were, uh, when I was at the elementary school, for example, there, the field days would be, uh, they would be held at the, at the grounds where the Sedley School was. And it would be the rural schools competing against the rural schools and then the town schools competing against the town schools. And we would have our own, like the rural schools would be, have their own ball teams. And so you would have a grade one kid on the, on the team and a grade nine kid on the team. You, you get, I mean, let's face it, if there's 20 kids in the school and you need nine people to make up a ball team, anybody could hold the bat and swing it and hit or catch a ball would be on the team. Uh, and that, that's basically what we learned. Now in the country school, when I was there, and we were getting ready for these field days. There's lots of days in May yeah, in preparation for it because the field day would be over by the beginning of June. Uh, I don't know how much studying we did. We were outside practicing. Practicing long jump, practicing running broad, high jump, playing ball. We were practicing in preparation for the field day because it was a big event. So what did you do on field day? Everything I could. Wherever, you know, we, everybody compete, everybody was in it. You didn't really have a choice. You couldn't stand on set. Now, there might have been a few people who didn't play ball, but I, no, you, you had to play ball. Because there were, I mean, if there were, what were we, 15 in the school at that time? 20 at the max? Except for the little grade ones. Pretty well, everybody, and the year my brother and sister started grade one, there were six or seven of them in grade one. So you take 20 kids, take away six, that leaves you 14 kids. And of those 14 kids, the minimum you need is nine for your team. So there's not many people sitting on the, on the sidelines or not, not being, everybody was involved. It was basically everybody involved. What position did you play when you played softball? I played shortstop, left field, I pitched. Yeah, I guess those are the three areas that I covered. I, I wasn't a fast runner, but I was a good catcher. <laughs> And I could throw the ball, and that was the good thing. When you were going to high school, were there dances and things like that? No, nope, there were no do? dances at school when I graduated. Uh, there were seven girls graduated that class that year. 
there were only seven of us, and we were all girls, we decided we wanted to have kind of a dance, but, you know, nobody had had a dance before. It was graduation exercises and program, and that was it. Um, we were going to have a party, and we, I think, had arranged to be in the town hall, but we had a cloudburst that afternoon, and one of the girls came in for the graduation exercises on the uh, back of a jeep in order to get in, because the roads were absolute uh, mud, absolute sea of mud. And of course, at that time, we have to think about country roads were dirt roads. Some of them were almost trails. So as soon as it got wet, some people didn't travel. So you were, you know, you were stuck where you were, if you want to call it. Uh, so that so-called party we had thought we would have, or that little dance that we were going to have, as we had created, didn't take place. <laughs> but I think some took place shortly after. They started having some kind of social function after the graduation for it. And it just because kids, kids wanted it. That, and it was a good way to celebrate for the kids. But that, yeah, that's OK. Do you want? OK. These two pictures are kind of significant for me. Okay. In that they are my great grandparents uh, and their family. And this is the first one. And this is where I did a little bit of genealogical learning. Because if you look at that picture very closely, there are six children. Mm -hmm. Okay. That same family is here. And there now are only five. And again, this is information I didn't know initially. And that, of course, is that this little boy died. And between the time this little boy died, uh, well, from the time he was born, till this picture was, t was taken, which I believe was taken right after Grandpa got married, there was also another little girl born and died. The little girl and this little boy died within a week of each other. They buried one, and couple, next week buried the next one. And I believe it was diphtheria. There was a diphtheria epidemic, 1902, and uh, that's. Are these two wearing the rosary? They're wearing a cross, a cross. or or could it, yeah no they're wearing rosaries yes they're wearing rosaries yeah. okay yeah was that something common back then that that well I mean this is past your generation obviously because I don't know because uh, I don't think I can say. A lot of people wore a crucifix, but I don't know if they actually wore the rosaries. And in this case, it may have been the kids when, opting for it or whatever. When I don't you know. were a kid, did they wear the rosaries? No. Or did they wear just a cross? They would have worn a cross. Okay. You didn't wear the rosary. You, you may have carried your rosary with you, but you didn't. Uh, it wasn't something you wore. Yeah, with. yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Is, where's your grandpa in this one? Grandpa? This is grandpa. And that one there. Okay. That's uh, him. And now this family goes back to Peggy and Mary's family. Because, you see, she is the sister to this man. No, the daughter. The daughter to that man. She's his daughter. Okay. So that's where the relationship comes in in, in that family. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, this is older. Picture of Grandma and Grandpa. Great Grandpa and Great Grandma Did when you they were in town. Them? Yes, Grandpa. I was probably... I was about seven when he died, and I remember his funeral vaguely, and some of it I'm not sure if it's necessarily accurate. For some reason, I have this idea that I remember the coffin being brought out of the house, and uh, for some reason think that it was taken to town on the back of a wagon, but that may be wrong. Uh, it, it's not clear. That's all I really remember of, of him. Uh, and I, I guess I shouldn't say that. I remember they, when they lived in town, but nothing really specific about them. Uh, they lived with their second son uh, in town, and I re remember Uncle Pete more than I remember them as such. Uh, so your grandpa, grandpa on your mother's side. Mm -hmm. Died when you were about the same age. My dad, my mother's, yeah, your okay. Your mother's dad died at about the same. The same year. The same year. Uh, just a minute. Just, I'm sorry. Just a minute. No. He died in 42. Grandpa Johannes died in 44. I think that's the, the time. Somewhere. 
42, 44. They weren't that, those two weren't that far apart. I, I don't necessarily remember the days anymore. Okay. I have to look in my book. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Then, now this is my grandmother's father, Grandpa Uppercavich. And this I have underneath. I made a photocopy of it because it's Grandpa's writing. And so again, it's something you want. But this is my grandmother's father. And he lost his wife. They'd been here about four years, I guess, when she died. So he brought up his family of about six or seven kids, I think. Grandma was the fifth, and I think there's two younger than she is, uh, by himself. He never remarried, uh, but I understand from what I'm told, a very gentle, a very loving man, a very good man. Okay, some other pictures of Grandma and Grandpa, I guess. Okay. And that's Grandma and Grandpa and their first two children, the two oldest ones. So this is? This is Agatha, and that's John. Now here we go into at a time when boys wore dresses. You, how do you pronounce Agatha. it? Agatha. Agatha. So yeah. you wouldn't pronounce it Agatha. It's Agatha. No, in, we said Agatha. Now, okay. uh, I think probably if you angl anglicized it, it would be Agatha. Okay. But we said Agatha. That's right. Okay. okay. And then that's a picture of them in 1924. And then Grandpa doing some reading. He was uh, uh, very learned, I guess you could say, or self-taught individual in that he, he's going through his books, learned to read and write and whatnot, basically on his own, and that's his it. Animal husbandry books that he had for taking care of his cattle. That was a, a big thing with him. So going back up here to mm -hmm. John and Agatha, Agatha um, do you remember them from when you oh, were yes. kids? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, Can you tell me a little bit about Uncle John? Oh, just a minute. When we were kids? Mm -hmm. uh, well, Uncle John was... He was a little bit of a Casanova. Uh, he was the oldest boy. And so, like the oldest boys, probably expected to do certain things and certain... Uh, behavior to some extent. Uh, his family grew up not far, that far from our place, five miles. Uh, he was, I wasn't necessarily very fond of him. Um, and I don't know why, really, to be perfectly honest. I don't know why he, he didn't, uh, I guess maybe he didn't joke with us kids. He didn't play with us kids or seem to have anything to do with us kids. He was not a kid's person, if I wanted to say that. Uh, the younger uncle, Uncle Joe, uh, well, he was something different. He was, I mean, he was always, you know, he and he was a bachelor a little longer. He was older when he got married. Uh, but he was kind of a jokester. He, he was just much more amiable. He, he, you know, he would pester you as a kid. He'd kind of play with you or something, but not... Uh, now, in terms of her, uh, Agatha, she was 16 when she went into the convent. So in terms of knowing her as a young girl, I didn't know her as a young girl. I knew her as she was a nun. And when she came home to visit, and this would be the rules again of the sisters, which don't exist anymore, they had their habits. They could come home and visit. And certainly they got, grandmother got around some of it to some extent, but they couldn't enter your house. So when they came to visit us, and they always came in at least twos, and we come to visit us at the farm, and there might be two, might be three, might be four that would come, but they never came into the house. Now, grandmother kind of got around some of that, and sometimes we did too, uh, provided the conditions were there, and at our place it didn't, uh, because you know they have to go to the bathroom sometimes. Okay, well, on the farm it was an outhouse, so you go to the bathroom there. But uh, Grandma would, they had, the house had, oh, well, let's go to the house here, had a big kind of porch veranda on it, you see. And so that, Grandma said, is not the house. So they would go in there and they would eat in the porch, and it was basically all windows, okay. And that's how Grandma got around them, not 
going into the house, she would say that it wasn't in the house. Do you know what the reason was behind them not being able to enter it? Into it the was house? part of part of the religious order's rules and regulations, which were, I mean, you know, <laughs> you look back on some of this and you say this is ridiculous, but that that's, you know, when they left home to become a sister, that's what they, that's what they did, and so that was you followed the rules of the order, and some of them didn't get. Leave some don't leave the convent, or you know, like the, some of the precious blood sisters, they're cloistered. They don't even get out. Which these were much more, seemed much more progressive than some of the others did. So this house here, this is the house that you would go and stay at. That's the house I stayed at. That's okay. right. Now, is, that house is a, kind of an interesting house, and again, that's how interesting because it maybe Grandpa more than anything else. It was a house that had the kitchen and the main floor, and then there was a living room or parlor, and Grandpa and Grandma's bedroom. But basically, you could call it two houses together, and there was a doorway between the kitchen and the living room, and a stairway inside that doorway that led to the upstairs for the bedrooms. That was the girl's side of the house. The stairway to the bedroom for the boys was off the kitchen, and there was no connection between the two bedrooms. There was none. Did your da uh, grandpa build that house, or...? I'm not sure if he built it specifically, or if it was there, or they moved two things together. But I suspect that he had some involvement in the design of it. And this again became part of uh, Grandpa's strict rules. I mean, he was a very strict man, and you know, you, you do as I tell you to. So with the grandkids, was he very strict with the grandkids? I never thought of him as that strict. You see, that's why I said to you earlier, I, uh, he, he seemed to be, a, he was strict in the sense that, you know, when it was time to eat, you ate. When it was seven o'clock in time for me to go to bed, I went to bed. Uh, when I stayed with him, I went with him to church in the morning, because he'd go to church every morning. Uh, but ever give me a spanking? I don't ever remember being, needing a spanking from him or getting one. Uh, when I stayed with them at that farm when I was little, there were neighbors across the road who would have been about a thousand yards away. They'd have been across the road and down a wee bit. I would run over there lots of times, and Dad would come down to Grandma and Grandpa's, and he'd have to come and get me. And it was Dad who would discipline me, not Grandpa. So if I, you know, if I ran away, if I want to call it that, to the neighbors to visit those two girls. I don't ever recall Grandpa having to do the discipline. It always appeared to be Dad that did it. So in that sense, and yet in terms of his own family, he was very, very domineering, very controlling. You said four of his daughters? Four of his daughters were nuns. And did any of his sons become priests? No, nope, none of them. Even the youngest one was supposed to be, and he told his dad right out, he said, I don't intend to be a priest, and don't talk to me about it again. Uh, How was the reaction of your grandfather to that? He, he had to accept. He, I guess by that time he'd gone through three boys with that suggestion that uh, he was not going to be winning any of them or getting any of them. So uh, no point in saying any more is, is sort of the feeling I have out of this. Okay, in the back of that one, yeah. Oh, is there something no. in the back? Okay, yeah. It's, yeah, there's two pages. These are just pictures, and I don't think you want them, and then there's not... Uh, harvesting pictures. Oh. Okay. With doing the uh, seeding with the horses and then the threshing machines. Um, again, threshing crews would go from farm to farm. One person would maybe get the threshing machine uh, because it was a big expense and he, he would rent or sort of go around the community and do the threshing for whoever would arrange with them, and all you had to do was, I think you had to provide most of the men. So your grandfather had a threshing machine? No, I don't think, well, I'm not sure, because this particular set of pictures was not Grandpa's machine. Oh, okay. So, but I know he had lots of um, men, or arranged to have the men, and this, of course, would be their um, scene where they would be eating, where they break for their lunch, and this particular first person was dad, and of course this was the, you know, the whole episode. He, he, like, 
like my aunt said, he worked my dad to the bone. So that that's kind of, he, he became basically like a hired man. That's mm -hmm. how he was treated. And then here's the horses coming in at night, you see. This is my sort of, oh. Uh, this is great photos to show you what the process was. Yeah, I, I was really happy to have those pictures. Okay, now dad is a twin. Okay. Oh, yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah, and so there's oh, dad and his twin sister, their first communion pictures. Oh, those are crazy. And then this is his other sister and a cousin. Now, he also had, I also have um, two nuns. Uh, on Grandpa, Grandpa had four, four daughters that were nuns. His brother had two girls, and they were both nuns. So they all, all six of them belonged to the same order. So your dad, did he take his first Holy Communion in? Sadly, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now the family picture. Okay. Some of these. And those are some of the girls. There's the family picture. And this would have been the picture that was taken after Sister Philippa, or what we called her, Agatha, came back home to visit. She'd finished. She might have had her final profession then. Let's see. Yet, yeah, no, she hadn't taken her final profession yet. Uh, so she came home, and so they, they have the family picture, and it may very well have been taken before the others went in. And where's your dad on this one? This is dad, and that's his twin sister. And then this is my Uncle John, the one that is the little one that you saw there. And then this is the only one still alive. No, I'm sorry, my, my uncle, this one, and this one are, oh no, she is too. Um, where is she here? Clara, yeah, that one. So there's the three alive, Clara, Joe, and uh, Anna Mary, are the three that are still alive in that family. Okay, that should, just one more here of this, and that's picture, dad's school pictures. Oh. Now, I've got, I'm working on this and doing a photo restoration on that one, trying to build a a good picture and getting scratches, but like you know, you don't do that in half a day. It's been a lot of days work to get it to where I have it. And, uh, but that's the original picture and I don't. And that's dad playing ball. That, that's, so is this at high school for yeah, you? Yeah, that's in Sedley, yes. Okay. That's at the same school that I went to then. What, uh, you said your mom only had like an eighth grade education. What did your dad have? Dad got, I think, I'm not sure whether it's 10 or 11. Okay. I think it's to grade 11. But he didn't get his grade 12. Okay. He, uh, so with your parents and for you, how important was it that you received an education? Because you're the first, not the first, but very few have received a college education. When I start, it just seemed important to me. It, I don't think it was necessarily that important to Dad because I remember Dad saying to me when I told him I want to go to university that, uh, well, why would you want to go to university? What do you want to take? And I was a very strong math individual. And I thought I would major in math and take my BA and uh, probably get a government job. After all, they needed mathematicians. There was lots of work where people with math backgrounds could be. Well, he didn't really think much about it. You know, after all, I was a girl. I was likely going to get married. What would all that education do for my kids? You know, that thought girls don't need an education because they're going to get married and have kids. Uh, somewhere along the line, my last year, I came across some information on dietetics and home economics, and I really was intrigued with it. So when Dad sort of said no to the math, I said, well, what about if I take home ec? And he thought if I took home ec, that would be good because I could use it. So then I was able to go to university because I took the home ec. Now, do I regret that, as I said earlier? No, not really, because that was, I, I enjoyed it. It's not that I didn't enjoy it. And I don't know if the maths would have taken me where I wanted to go or what I would have been like to doing so. Uh, okay, I think, okay, that's pictures of the rest of the family, individual families. I think we're okay. Uh, yeah, these are pictures that I have of dads from when he was at college. Oh, okay, <laughs> probably one of these. There's, there's Dad, the hockey player. Oh, my goodness. 
And so those are his college hockey pictures. So when you were playing ball and, and just throwing the ball around and playing around on the farm as a kid, would your dad play with you? There were times if he could, he'd play with us a bit. Uh, not that often, really, but he certainly encouraged us. Like when we started playing ball and going to sports days, he saw to it that we got around like he would drive us. And he, he was a, probably one of our best fans. You know, a good. And at one point, I had gone, gotten away from home by that time when my other sisters, four of them, were playing ball together and he coached them. And so he, I think he was involved in the coaching the year they won the provincial championship. So, uh, you know, he was a real strong supporter of if we wanted to play ball, we got to play ball. Yeah, we want. We may have had chores that we had to do, you know, work around the yard or the farm, but we got it done. We he got saw to it that we got to the ball games. What did your mom think about that? No problem. I don't think she. Re she was again. It was a supporter. Uh, she was there with us, backed us. Yeah. Hmm. And then on the backside there is his. His baseball pictures, I forgot about oh. those. Okay, so there's his hockey picture, there's the hockey player, and there's the baseball player. So. Do you know what position your dad used to play in baseball? No, I don't know what position he played. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he didn't uh, play catcher, but I, I, I wouldn't, I couldn't tell you, and I can't, can't even tell you uh, from the... Uh, from the glove that he's wearing. And, and I would say he probably was a fielder. He was a good batter. He was a real good batter. And that was. Uh, OK. So photographs, when you were growing up, was, this something, was that something common that people would take photographs? Because you seem to have a lot of photos from your, your dad's childhood and your mom's. Maybe. To some extent, I suppose, certain occasions. Uh, I, yeah, I, I'm not sure how, how strong the photographs were. I know that as soon as I got one of those brownie box cameras, in fact, I think I got Grandpa's old camera, I was into photos. They, from these, yes, I have to say that they were, obviously they did take pictures. I mean, this is the family picture that was taken just bef shortly before Grandma died, and this was just before their 50th wedding anniversary pictures. Um, and these, of course, are the pictures of the sisters in the convent. Uh, you know, okay, there's a picture of, of them in their habits in our house. Oh. You know, what, once they started being able to come into the house. Now, that's only two of them, or three of them, I mean. But, then, uh, yeah, because there was four of them. And these, I yeah. guess four of them, or is uh, the same person? That's the same person. Yeah, <laughs> okay, <all> same. <laughs> yeah, no, it's the same person. Okay. Uh, and that's Dad's twin sister. Oh, really? Yeah. So your dad, Dad's twin sister became a nun. Yeah. And then I have pictures of them and whatnot when they celebrated their 50th jubilees and stuff in the sisterhood and stuff. That, uh, so did you ever, I mean, what, what type of aunts were they? I mean, since, they were, since you were rarely get to see them, when you did see them, what, what do you remember about them from your childhood? Uh, okay. This one we probably saw the most of, and that was because she was stationed here in Regina, and so was she. This one I hardly knew as a youngster because she was down east all the time. And basically, Sister Philippa, the oldest one, Agatha, was down east as well. So, and she was, well, we, I think you could say we called her the matriarch to, in, to some extent, that she was more prim and proper and uh, I'm a sister and I have to do this, a little more conservative in her behavior. Um, this one is probably the one who... Um, was a little more radical in that when the sisters started wearing secular clothes, she also didn't live in the convent. She lived on her own. And uh, she taught in schools outside of the city where the convent was. So she lived, she was a, a sister, but lived as a single woman. And... Uh, Enjoyed. Oh, we had we had great times with them. Absolutely great times when we got to visit with them, but we didn't see them that often. Yeah, you know? and they absolutely, you know, I think they adored us kids. But anyway, <laughs> and 
and we had some good times. I mean, you know, this is this is the one that's still alive of the sisters, and uh, you know that's how she is, and it, she's quite an easygoing, jovial individual, very quiet sort of thing in some ways, but eh, a little bit of the monkey in her. But they, you know, they left home when they were 16, 17. They, they didn't get to be young women out in the community, so so they didn't get. Uh, uh, okay, that's that's the family as such. Uh, one girl in that family was a secretary, and she was she was a bit of the rebel in the family. A bit of the uh, I'll throw these in here. Uh, she had a little bit of war with Grandpa, I think, and not necessarily the best. But oh, okay, sorry, I'll just, <laughs> I'm rushing you here now. Mom and Dad's pictures, very quickly, a couple of those. Okay, that's their wedding picture. And okay, these I have. Okay, this is the picture I was telling you about earlier. Okay. That there. We take that one out. So. Yeah. Oh, here, let's take that off of there. What am I doing? I closed that up on you, didn't I? Um, there we go. Okay, so this is the one. Yeah, and the, you know, this is at Grandpa Geis's farm. So the wedding would have taken place in the church, and then they would have come back to the farm and had a meal or something. But you see Dad's sister. See how somber she is? Mm -hmm. She's really unhappy because Grandpa made her wear a dark suit. Uh, and they were going to go home. They weren't, she wasn't going to be able to be around to so-called party with the rest or, you know, have the celebration. He was going to have to go home. So she was really annoyed with Grandpa. And this is your the, mom's sister? Uh, mom's cousin. Oh, cousin. And it was her cousin uh, that we... Uh, And then this, this it, to me was a real treasure. When mom died and we were cleaning out her things, I found this little newspaper clipping and it's a write-up of their wedding. So in my searches one day when I was at archives, it's, it was in a paper. You know, you know it's been in a paper, so where was it? So I spoke to one of the men there that was, he said, well, you know, let's try the leader post. We found it. I mean, I was so excited when I found that because although I had the original clipping, I didn't know where. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, as as a genealogist, you want you want not just the actor, you want to know the source of it. So that was kind of nice. I really liked that. That was kind of neat. And this is then the picture of the house that mom and dad moved into. That's the house I grew up in. That is the house you grew up in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. So where were people, where did people sleep? You know, how big of a house was it? Like, how many well, rooms? okay, this main floor initially, and we can go back to the electricity part, upstairs had four bed, one, two, three, three basic bedrooms, and then this was sort of a hall, but we used it as a bedroom as well. So in essence, you could kind of see it's kind of like four bedrooms. This was the main floor, and this whole part initially was a kitchen eating area and had two kind of pantries at the back end of it. In 1948, when we got the electricity, Dad tore those pantries out, built cupboards for Mom, and we had a big kitchen then. It, the kitchen would have been, oh, well, at least the length of this. Yeah, at least the length of the, maybe the size of this room. And the stairway downstairs and the cupboards around here and then the doorway to the living room. And then the other side was the living room. And at one point, I understand, it also had two smaller rooms or at least one smaller room off it. And we ended up taking down some walls and having a big living room and a big kitchen is what it amounted to. Um, okay, this is another angle of the farm from back behind the barn, more or less, with, which would have been over there and some granaries and shops and things that Dad had. Um, so what year did you get electricity in? 48. 48. Mm -hmm. And that's when he, Dad built the cupboards and things in the house, okay. too. How did the electricity change your life? Oh, well, I mean, the old kerosene lantern, you know, in terms of reading and stuff for school and doing things, you could do things at night. Uh, it, was, it was a real treat. Plus, Mom got a beautiful stove, and of course, Mom was a cook, eh? or like cooking. So the stove, she, the electric stove she bought had two ovens in it. 
It was a two oven stove. It wasn't just the stoves as we see them now. It had two ovens. It was, this was really something. Uh, and she loved her stove and she loved the electricity and had no trouble putting up with the lack of running water. when she had, was able to have that. And then of course, eventually we got the electric, electric clothes dryer and that made a bit of a difference too when it came to making things more convenient for her. Yeah. And that's me as a baby oh. here with mom and dad. Okay, so the first child. Yes, yes. Mm. And then that's my brother. Okay. Now, uh, just this suit that my mother's wearing, mm -hmm. I wore in grade 9, 10. My daughter wore it when she was at university. And I'm not sure if I've got it here or she has it. I think she sent it back to me because I asked to have it sent back. So oh my goodness. it's a piece of clothing that we've kept from way back then. So did your mom originally make that or did she purchase no, it? No, that was a bot suit. Okay. That was a bot suit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Those are cute. And then what are we? Okay, the, okay these are some of the first, farm, you know, dad working on the farm. And, uh, okay, that's not the one. Yeah, that's not the one. That's just shots of him farming. The, the John Deere tractor? Yep, yeah, his lug tractor, what we call <laughs> lug tractor. And then this is a picture of me riding on the tractor with Dad. Oh. That was, that's, that's the one I was. How, about how old were you in there? Probably two or three. Oh. Yeah. Getting three. an early start to farm work. Yeah, yeah. That's why I didn't stay there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, there's, now, I think there's a little bit of kind of interest in these, in that, again, the, uh, the curly locks, but you see what I'm wearing, the babushka mm -hmm. or or the um, like a scarf, scar yeah, you know, which is uh, I think typical traditional kind of garb that uh, that the Germans mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. that we would, would have worn. But there are my ringlets. In the uh, garden, did you guys used to play in the garden? <laughs> a lot. And it was until it wasn't as soon as we were old enough. Then we also had to uh, weed in the garden, and well, that's just oh. again. That's the three of us: Bernice, Gabe, and myself. And this was my country school teacher's two oldest children, and the two families were really quite close. Dad got along very well with him. So and you had a wagon on your farm? Yes, that was my brother's wagon. That he, it was his wagon, and we had a tricycle. The three of us shared the tricycle, but it was his tricycle, really. Um, and we had, for a vehicle, we had this truck. Dad got it in 40, 41, and we didn't get a car until Christmas of 48. So Mom and Dad and the six of us kids, and until my uncle got his truck, that was our mode of transportation. So when we went to church on Sundays, Sundays we had two masses. One at 8.30, which was called a low mass, and one at 10.30, which was called high mass. And we took shifts. One would go to one and one would go to the other because we could. And sometimes we somehow or other got, all got into the truck. I don't know how, but we went, all went together. Uh, Mom was notorious for always having to have something to do, so we were always late for church, which annoyed me to no end, really. Uh, but, and Dad wasn't pleased, but that, that was a fact. We lived, we lived with that with Mom. Uh, and, of course, church now, at that time, was for that, now the community that I grew in this, well, I can talk about that later when we're out there traveling because there's no point in doing that now. Uh, we had so there's a picture of all of us again, and that's Margie <laughs> when she was a baby. So that just so, and you know that's interesting. And these are portraits that you know Mom and Dad took us to Regina to have studio pictures taken, and I just found that really odd because I didn't really think that we had that much money. But obviously they considered it important to have pictures of us kids. How old were you here? Mm. 45 now, I'm 8. Do 
Do you remember anything about World War II and how it affected yes. life? Yes, I do. Uh, when I went to school, I bought war saving stamps. And this is through Red Cross, and we collected war stamps, 25 cents to my war saving stamps. I also remember probably right after the World War, Dad sponsored a refugee. And we called them DPs, which of course you wouldn't dare do now, displaced persons. And she was German origin. And I even think of some of the war that being German was not kind of really good. Uh, I felt a little bit of discrimination or prejudice because after all the Germans had started the war and I was of German background and so there were the there were these comments that were made about the dumb Germans or the you know bloody Germans kind of comments that that I can remember some of that uh, and certainly dad was not looked upon very favorably when he sponsored that woman and brought her over uh, she worked with us and for us for about a year but was not looked upon as a very smart thing to do, if you want to call it. Uh, the community, some of the community didn't like it. Uh, that much I can recall of it. Uh, Dad didn't have to serve, of course, because he was a farmer and he was married. Um, so any other association with it, I, I, what I remember is this discrimination and, of course, through, our, through school projects doing the war saving stamps and the ration books that we had. I remember the ration books being having to take them to town to get groceries and how we could only get so much sugar or only so much coffee and tea. And of course, mom and dad weren't strong on coffee and tea, so that didn't matter too much. But uh, the trading within families, too, of coupons, where somebody didn't use some of the coupons, they would give them to somebody else, the neighbors, so they could have the extra sugar or whatever it is that they wanted. Yeah. Oh, okay. and that's a picture of, I think, one of our favorite girls that worked for us. Uh, oh, dumb ringlets again. Oh, how cute. There, that's some of my, this, wait a minute, let me just backtrack here. Yeah, this is my first day at school. Oh. So, is that what you would carry your lunch to school in? Yep, it's our lunch bucket. So it was actually a real lunch bucket. Yes, it was a lunch bucket, like the workers have today. Is that a puppy next to you? Probably, yeah, one of the dogs. We had dogs on the farm. Okay. We had lots of dogs. Okay. Now, this is a picture of a winter that was a lot of snow. And the snow bank was high enough that where we stood, you could hardly see the window or window, you know, and we, there we are on the snow banks. So um, did you guys sled a lot when yeah, you were kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We snow bank, oh, those... And we went outside. I, I have to say, you know, we went, Mom would say to it that we got outside and got our fresh air and we played outside and had a lot of fun. In the snowbanks, we built snow tunnels. We didn't build as many snow tunnels on the farm as we did at school. We built a lot of uh, snow tunnels at school and snow houses, but we didn't on the farm. But yeah, there were lots of snowbanks and you could go for a long ride off of a snowbank with the sleigh, yes. How about ice skating? Was that something no. that you did? No, because we were in the country. We didn't have skates. Uh, the rink wasn't built in town until 1948. And that's when the skating rink was built and Dad was helping with it. That's the only picture I can think of offhand that I have. My French braids. Okay. Aren't you a cute little girl? And this is the imp. Here. Remember I told you? This is my... No, this isn't the one. There. Elaine, you see the look on her face? And that's basically, to some extent, how she still is. Those, and that's Margie, and that's Dorothy, the youngest. And the, that's Elaine and Margie. And that's Elaine again. Oh, how cute. So these are the three little ones. Those are the three little ones. <laughs> okay, here's the funeral. Now, you want to talk, just look at her sobbing. Oh, my goodness. The whole time, every picture, I got my head down and cleaning. <laughs> I'm probably still as bad today when it comes to something like that. But anyway. Yeah, that was a little casket that we carried. And then just, and see there's, you know, my uncle carried it out of the church, but we carried it after he carried it out of the church. 
And she said she's buried at the cemetery. Yeah, she's out mom. there. Yeah, she's with mom and dad. What was her name? Florence. And I think that should just about be it for those. Uh, okay, I'll just close this and flip some of these. I can put those others in. I think I know where they go. I haven't finished all of these yet. This is <laughs> projects to come. Oh, uh, just yet. Yeah. And these are, remember I said something earlier about these picnics that we had, mm -hmm. family get-togethers? Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a, there's a picture taken at one of the fried that, chicken, fried chicken and potato at salad the forest, uh, at the Indian Head Forestry Farm, yes, yeah. So we would gather there and everybody would bring food and everybody put it together and everybody had a great time. And this is my graduation, or our graduation class, the seven of us girls. And right after those pictures were taken, we had a huge, as I said earlier, a thunderstorm. Big cloud burst, two and a half or something inches of rain within about an hour. We thought our graduation exercises were going to be canceled. We didn't know we, I would get to town to port. Uh, we delayed them a bit, but... The dresses here that you're wearing, were those store-bought dresses? Or uh, they, they look pretty. Her mother made hers. I think her mother made hers. I made mine. I think hers is made. Hers is bought. And hers is bought. And hers is bought, I think. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So you learned how to sew then, obviously, if you made yours. Yeah, I learned to sew quite young. I was probably in grade nine when I started sewing. Okay. Uh, where are those first ones? I'm going to make sure I throw them in the right book. Dads. Whoops, these are these going to mine now. Or mom and dad's, I think. Yep, this goes into mom and dad's. And those, and then just I'll take you through a couple of hours. And this is the picture. Oh, that <laughs> That's is a cute picture. That's coat that Mum made for me, and I'm not sure what it was. I think it was made from somebody else's coat, but I'm not 100 percent sure. These ones can't, are not like the other books. No, come I out. I can. We can. He can take a digital picture of it. I'll just mark. Okay. Just, Remember this page. Okay. Come and take a digital of it. And then these are some shots of myself as a little girl, and some more of those of us with our puppies. Uh -huh. Actually, you know what? I can take this one out because that's that other oh, one. Perfect. Communion, first oh, communion, and communion? Uh, this would be, um, yeah, this is my first communion. This would be my confirmation. This is first communion. These are my confirmation pictures. Okay. No, no, this is first communion. These are confirmation. Yeah, because I've got these stinkingly long ringlets. Oh, I did. I, mean, I was supposed to put the book here. <laughs> well, you keep hey, forgetting. It's fine. Um, I'm just going to rip this, though, so we can mark this so we can make sure that we take a picture okay. of it. Uh, okay. Okay. I think that was one of the first dresses I made for myself. And these are pictures, then, of when I stayed at the convent, boarded at the convent, and, of course, I was home for, obviously, a month end here to visit with my impish sisters. Uh, yeah, see, there, okay. There I am with wearing that suit that okay. Mom had. Okay. And then this is, oh, these are convent days. Uh, okay, what else? Are these, these are you here? Yeah, yeah, those Can are convent take days. Take a picture of the convent. Oh, okay, and this is, th these are, are great, and of course I had to have a picture, you know, with my big dress spread out. This our graduation pictures. 
Ah, uh, okay, this is when I did some summer school catechism classes I taught. And my first university pictures. Oh, that one there. And, and these are pictures after I met Cord. Is that your wedding picture? No, that's oh. a, my girlfriend's wedding picture. And uh, I was made of honor, and I had a broken thumb that I played ball the day before, or went to play ball. I was supposed to play ball on the team. I was gone from home, of course, and so they needed somebody. I said, sure, I'll play. No big deal. And one of the coaches hit this Lincoln B-liner right at me. Somehow my thumb got on, and I broke the corner off the thumb. So I'm made of honor the next day. And you can't see it, but I'm wearing a cast. And my arm is black and blue and swollen. And this is my graduation picture and then our wedding picture. Okay, we want to do one of the wedding pictures. Cause that's, where we, that's where we end our stories usually is at the wedding. Okay, and that, that's it here on these.